Hi, I'm Dave Ingerbretson, and Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. Uh, Leroy, what have you got for us tonight? Well, we have three flies, again, uh, like you say, a mixed bag of them <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> the first one will be a Latorte hopper, then we're going to tie a crayfish pattern for bass. They call it a simple crayfish. And then we're going to tie a peacock and partridge uh, pheasant. pheasant nymph. I mean, mm -hmm. peacock and pheasant nymph. Mm -hmm. First one we'll tie is a Latorte hopper, just another variation of so many hoppers that mm -hmm. are out there. This like, is a good one in the east, though. It's really yes, popular it is. in the east. Yes. Uh, it's a good all-around hopper pattern. Uh -huh. But I first discovered this one when I was living in Pennsylvania. Oh, really? And, uh, you know, out there, the Latorte and the Pens okay, It's a good sure. hopper on the spring creeks. For that. Well, I'll use a, a standard 6 aught black tying thread this time because we're going to spin here. The body will be a yellow dubbing. The uh, wing will be, the underwing will be a pheasant, uh, I mean a turkey uh, tail feather. And then the overwing and head will be the deer hair. Now I have a, a uh, size 8 dry fly hook in the vise. I was surprised when I first saw this pattern Dave, because they don't tie it on a long shank hook no, like yeah. most hoppers are. It's tied on a, on a regular shank yeah. hook. Well, it's a little smaller fly. They fish bit. it on the spring creeks. Well, and on the freestone streams too, but it's, it's really the first simplest hopper I ever tied. Oh, really? Was the Latorte hopper. Uh -huh. That's because I was learning out there. Okay. And that's where well, it was Well, it is a simple little fly. Now, I have the hook dressed as always. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this dubbing on. And again, you don't need a whole lot of this dubbing. It's uh, People have a tendency to make that far too heavy on yeah. the thread. All you want, basically, I've heard you say so many times, yeah. is a fuzzy thread. Well, and you'll see that uh, the Latorte hopper turns out to be a little more delicate hopper than mm -hmm. what we're used to mm -hmm. in the big water in the West. That's why they account for it with the, uh, the smaller size, That's I'm right. sure. Right. Now I'll put my dubbing loop in there. Take a couple of wraps, throw it see, over. Now, it's interesting to see you do that because when most of us tie the Eastern style like that, we just dub on the thread and wind it on. Oh, okay. No, no, go ahead. Well, because it's uh, it's really nice. This I way. just get used to it, doing it, it this gets, way. It uh, gets very tight. Yes, it does. And, uh, and I can go through and pick it out if I wanted it to be a little. No, I, it does a great job. I just haven't seen it done that way that much. Okay. I do that when I want a real fuzzy body and I put oh, short guard hairs in like squirrel or something. And see, I do it this way if I want it tighter. Yeah, well, yeah no, it's I just wind very sparse on oh, the thread okay. and then get a tight body by how I wrap it. But, you know, that just points out the fact that there's different no ways. right or wrong way no, to do there it. there isn't. A lot of different ways and beginning tires should watch as many tires as they can. Try it all and develop your own style. See what's there. Pick out what's right, yeah. Now I'm going to take a section of this turkey. I have sprayed this with a, an art fixative. Uh -huh. Now that's a turkey wing quill, right? Turkey wing. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is just fold it right in half. And then as I cut a small semicircle here, it gives it a nice rounded... Right. Oh, I went the wrong way, Dave. I turned it the wrong direction. I want the open side toward me. Mm -hmm. And then cut around. I mean a V-wing. <laughs> and then you can see it makes just a real nice yeah. little knee. Well, that's, that's basically like the wing on the Dave's hopper. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll tie this down, keeping that on top of the hook, that overwing. Cinch it down. And then trim this off. Now we'll do just the standard uh, <clears throat> muddler type head or Dave's hopper type head. <clears throat> Call it whichever you would like. I'll get that under fur out, and then I'm going to measure it for about half the length of the shank of the hook, pretty close to half. You want that feather wing sticking back out so yes, you can see it. Yes, a little it. bit further, yeah. yes. And then I'll get rid of all those butt sections. I'll lay it on there. I'm going to do a soft wrap, another soft wrap, and then pull up. Everything flares away, and it keeps that right on top of the hook. Mm -hmm. Now I'll get my tying thread in front of that and I'm going to take another small section this time I'm going to turn it the opposite way get rid of that under fur in it. This is a neat trick I like that have the but points sticking I, forward. The, and I'm not going to trim them off. Yeah. Then I'm going to spin it I'll go back slightly into that first section 
and then come back out again toward the front. Now I take all of this. That's the seat. That's it gives the nice me, part. Yes, it gives me a little handle just to hang on to. Now, I hope everybody saw that, that he tied that in with the points sticking forward. Over the eye. So he could have a nice, he can mm -hmm. pull it back without getting a lot of uh, stuff stuck in the thread. Now I've seen this fly also tied with gray thread, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, I just grabbed a black, it really wouldn't matter which one. I'm gonna take it out of the vise again, but I'll keep it right here. You know, while you're trimming it, uh, I should say that if you tie this in all black, it makes a Latorte cricket. Cricket, that's right. And the time you would, you know, by the, when you're fishing <coughs> hoppers, it takes a while for the sun to come out and warm up the hoppers so they get active. But if you're fishing really early in the morning, especially when you might catch the big night feeding browns still on the water, there's no hoppers or there's no bugs. Mm -hmm. But the crickets are out all night. Oh, sure. That's when you hear the crickets sure. singing. So if you get out on the stream early in the morning, and uh, going out looking for some of those big night feeding browns, tie on a cricket, not a hopper. And you know, else. early in the morning in certain light conditions, you could see that black. Oh, absolutely. A lot easier than you could see you maybe know when this one. little steam coming off the river. Oh, sure. The, the, oh, man. Sure. That's the time to try a cricket, but a lot of people don't realize that. I hadn't thought of that oh, cricket yeah. being out all night like that. Yeah. Well, that's the basic Latorte hopper. You could just keep trimming on that and get them as small as you want. Put it back in the vise so everybody can get a little bit better angle on yeah. it. And again, you could just keep trimming on this all the way. I'll keep trimming as I talk. Yeah. The body material is made out of just a yellow dubbing. The uh, uh, wing is turkey wing, under wing, and the over wing is deer hair with a head of clipped deer hair. Now, as I seem to recall, they tended to tie that with a loose head rather than a really tightly packed well, hopper head. That's the way I've you, seen it. You can it. do it yes, any way you want. Yes. But as I recall, most of them, the head was tied what I call in a, a loose style. And uh, you could trim it to whatever shape. Trim you it could, any way you want. Yeah, you could make it a little bit more of a torpedo shape if yeah. you like. But uh, like everybody, everybody just keeps trimming and trimming. Yeah. Now it is an Eastern type <clears throat> fly, but you can certainly use it in the West. Oh, absolutely. And please. Especially in the spring before the hoppers oh, yeah. get as big yeah. as ours do. But please. Tie some in black and have a cricket. Oh, I'll bet it would be. And some people put little deer hair strands out for antenna, which crickets mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this is it's a dynamite cricket pattern, and most people don't fish crickets or realize why or when you the should word. do it. Yeah. But it's an early morning fly before sure. the temperatures come up. Well, there's and, a Latourd hopper. Yep. Yeah. Nice job. Thank Simple you. Simple little fly. Well, Leroy, I'm looking forward to this next fly because we're going to tie what's called a simple crayfish. <laughs> and I've really gotten into smallmouth bass fishing and largemouth too are good for crayfish, but I've yet to find a crayfish that looked good and was simple to tie. Some well, of the beautiful ties are very complicated. But they're not simple. But no, they're not. No. And this is a very, uh, uh, it, it will imitate the, the, the crayfish. It has yeah. the claws on yeah. it, the whole thing. Wasn't, didn't this come up from uh, Cliff Stringer? Cliff Stringer in Southern Idaho, Idaho. Yeah. 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 Nice little fly. Yeah. All right, for the simple crayfish, I'll use a 6 aught black tying thread. Again, I will weight this fly. Now, I don't think in the book that I saw Cliff did, but we'll use that non-lead weighted material. The claws will be a red fox squirrel tail. I will use copper wire to rib. I think, again, the original pattern called for black uh, thread ribbing, but I like that copper wire. The legs will be the brown hackle. The body will be brown chenille, and the shell back will be pheasant tail. Now I have a size 6, uh, 4X long hook in the vise. I've already pinched the barb on it. And I suppose you could use a brown thread, too, to oh, I'm, I'm sure match the brown could. fly sure. or the brownish-orange fly. Sure. And this really has some orange in it. A little bit. From the, little the bit. tail, yeah. yeah. And uh, a lot of the natural crayfish do have an orange mm -hmm. cast. So. Now I've dressed the shank like always. I'll get a piece of this weighted material. Of course, it always comes tangled up. And then I'm just going to go the entire hook shank. I'm going to wait because you want to get that fly down and crawl it along the bottom like the normal Absolutely. crayfish. Absolutely, I want mine weighted, yeah. And what I'll often do when I'm going to weight a body is I'll use either your rubber cement, rubber based mm -hmm. cement or head cement mm -hmm. to put on the thread first oh. to help hold that okay. 
That's well, I'll coat it down. now because it will have a tendency to want to run through. through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then by the time you cover it with thread, it'll be down. Yeah, there. and then I always come back over it and, and take four yeah. or five good wraps of thread across it. Yeah. And I'm going to tie the body over it anyway. I'm not real sure how yeah. necessary this is, but I know now that it's bound in place. Yeah. Then we'll take some of this fox squirrel tail. I'm going to take a fairly good sized clump of it. Well, people should understand that a crayfish is tied backwards on the hook. Yes. And you're yes. tying in the claws now. The claws first. But crayfish scuttle backwards, mm -hmm. and so the claws, the head of the fly is really at the bend of the hook. Mm -hmm. I want this to be about the shank, length of the shank of the hook. So I'll tie that on. I'll run those butts right up there tight against that lead wire. Get it all cinched down. Then come back to the front, to the rear, the front. This is kind yeah. of the front, rear of the hook, but the front of the bug. And I'm going to tie a figure eight in here to divide those claws. Now, you tied in one clump on top. One clump on top. And now you're dividing. Okay. I was going to ask dividing. if you were going to tie in one on each side or. No. Well, you could do it that could way. Could do it either way. Sure. Also, just like with, with your wing material on, on your hair flies, mm -hmm. you can wrap this around each clump, yep. each claw, kind of make it a little Pulls bit more, together, of a, nice. yeah, more of a segmented type body. Got a couple of those just want to stick together. I can probably lay those down a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm And there it is. Well, there's the claws. Now I'm going to tie in a clump of pheasant. This will become the head. No, no that's become pheasant, the back pheasant tail and, fiber. And the tail. Yeah, this is pheasant tail fiber. But this will become the shell back, and it will also be the tail of the Oh. Uh, crayfish as it sticks out over the head. All one piece. Mm hmm Well, that is a simpler way to do it. Then I'll tie in a piece of uh, copper wire for the ribbing. I'll tie in the chenille. And you could also use olive chenille on this, too. Or orange. Or orange. Rusty, burnt mm -hmm. orange. Then I'll tie in the hackle. Got an awful lot of stuff back here at the back. Now I'm only going to run this about halfway toward the eye of the hook. And what I'm going to do is just wrap this chenille forward to that point and then tie it down. Then I'll run my legs through there, the hackle. That way you have hackle only at the front, or legs I mean, at the front. Instead the back of going, hook the front of the fly. That's right, confusing. Yeah. Right. Then I'll get my tying thread back up to the front and just come right on forward uh -huh. with that chenille. Now I'm going to run out of chenille. And this is a good, well, maybe I won't. Oh, you'll make it. Cut that just a little bit you'll too short. Uh. If that happens and you can see yourself running short, you often the things to do is no is Put it on a hackle pliers. Oh, and go that way. Then yeah. you can grab mm -hmm. it and you get a little more. Now, little what I'm going to do is go in and trim those hackle right off the top. See, that's one thing I know how to do is correct mistakes. I've made so many. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Now, I fold that shell back over the top, tie it down here in front. Oh, you can and see that tail. And then I want to trim that, yes. which will become. That tail, the tail fanned out just yep. so nicely. And then here comes the, the ribbing forward. And this is a really simple. Now, when you go over the shell back like that, you can get by with wrapping in the same direction. Yes. You don't have to counterwind no, it. Don't counterwind this at all, no. Get that bound down good. Now, you know, that really is a simple and good looking crayfish. Well, and when uh, and when it moves through the water, yeah. those claws, they'll just kick and carry on like always. Yeah. And we'll and put a little whip finish on it. 
these other patterns, I think, look great. Oh. But I don't think a small mouth or a large mouth bass is so critical they're going to come up and inspect your pattern. Care one way or the uh, I like the impressionistic flies. Uh -huh. If it gives the impression of the live bug, that's what's important, or a live critter, in this case a crustacean. Now I'm going to go with my head cement and just run right along this shell back also. Okay. It just give it just a little bit of shine to it. Well, yeah. And it'll give it a little bit more durability, even though it has that copper wire through it. Yeah, why don't you turn that towards the camera in a top view so they can know the other way, so they can see from there, there. And there's the simple crayfish. Yeah. Maybe if I were going to do it again, I'd use a little bit more material so you get For a little heavier claws. For the claws. claws. Mm -hmm. That could well be. Yeah. yeah. But but that's a simple crayfish. It sure is. We've done nothing more than the red fox squirrel for the, the uh, claws, has a brown chenille body, has brown hackle for the legs, has pheasant tail for the back, and for the tail of the crayfish. Well, you can believe I'm going to tie a few of those up oh, for, that'll this, work. for this spring. Absolutely. That'll work. And now we're going to finish up with a generic nymph called the peacock and pheasant nymph. Mm -hmm. And I believe this was developed by Andy Puyans down in Walnut Creek, California. Yes. Yes. Uh, excellent fly tire and run, mm -hmm. for years ran a Lots shop down there. Lots of patterns he's come and up with. And this is a, just a good generic nymph pattern. Yes, yes. How are you going to tie it? Peacock and pheasant nymph. I will use a brown 6 aught. You could use 8 aught tying thread, whichever. We will rib it with a piece of copper wire. The body and thorax will be tied with the peacock curl. The wing case and legs I will make with the pheasant tail fibers. Now I have a 2X long size 8 hook and there's two different ways that I mash this barb down. Well there's probably more than that but myself. I use a pair of smooth jawed pliers. If you try to mash this barb with serrations in that jaw you may break that hook. Or it may break score it and break later. Yes. Now you can go in crossways like this and pinch that barb or you can come in front way like this. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. Now I like to go in top and bottom if that hook's big enough because I have considerably more of the metal hook in the jaws of my vise, uh, jaws of my, of my pliers. It really doesn't have much chance to break it then. Mm -hmm. In the hook it goes, in the vise it goes. I'll now don't you kind of like a 2X long hook for nymph? For nymph I do, I do. yes. Again, I'll do the little trick, hold that up at a 45 degree angle, just See run right said, down. See how tight that goes? Whoops, well I guess it didn't, that's makes all right. Them, <laughs> <laughs> makes them nice and tight. Now this has a tail of pheasant tail fibers. Just pull off a few, and they don't need to be very long. Well, and you most don't need nymphs, many on a nymph, because no. most nymphs at most got three tails no. anyway, so you don't need much. Keep them pretty sparse. This fly could also be weighted. Oh, I'll tie in a piece of this uh, copper wire for the ribbing. If I were going to weight this fly, I would weight just the front, that yep. thorax area. Yep. Pretty heavy bodied fly. I'm going to take four of these peacock curls, clip them top and bottom, and then tie them in by the tips. Got one straggler up here hanging on. So why did you clip the bottom? Because when I pull it off of the stem, it leaves the little curlies that, that pull off the little hard uh, stem that catch on my tying thread. Ah, because I, I knew wrap you were going to use there. them. No. So that makes sense. Good idea. Good So chat. I'll wrap this around the tying thread. What I'm doing is just making a little uh, peacock rope or a piece of peacock chenille, if you will. And that makes that body almost indestructible. Totally. And then when I put that uh, copper wire over it, yeah. it'll do it that much more. Sure. Then I'll just take the now you can see I broke one of those fibers. See it sticking mm -hmm, up? Mm -hmm. Won't hurt a thing. Won't nope, come unwrapped. Nope. I'll just keep right on going with it. Wrap this up to the thorax area. And then tie it off. That's a good demonstration of how tight that body is. That the broken, you mm -hmm. just cut that broken. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just cut it off. And it makes no difference. Now I'm going to reverse wrap this again. Because going into that peacock curl, even reverse wrapping is going to disappear a little but it's going to be a whole lot more durable with the thread and the peacock curl. I mean the thread yeah. and the wire both. There's no fish will ever pop that separate loose. Separate that. I mean you could see the peacock curl broke and it still did not come apart at all. No, that's on there. 
Then I'll take a little bit more uh, pheasant fibers. This will become the wing case and the legs. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to measure this before I tie it on. I want it to come, I'm going to tie it in at this place to go back. Uh, the points of the, the fibers case. are back. Mm -hmm. No, the points are forward. But oh. I've got to figure out how long do I want those legs. So I'm going to make it about twice as long as I actually need it. Mm. Okay? Then I'm going to turn it around. Well, see, you do do it backward. Well, I was just <laughs> measuring to yeah. see where okay. I was. Well, that makes sense. But I, I couldn't see how you were going to do it without having it okay. point backwards. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I have yeah. seen a lot of tires will tie that on. Uh-huh. Fold the legs over, I mean, fold the wing case, pull the legs back, and then trim the legs off. Oh, I, I would like much trim. rather no, have them, no. have them uh, natural as yeah. I would blunt like no, that. No, that makes sense to measure them and then turn them around. I just didn't realize where you were going. Now again, I'm going to tie in. I got four here again. This peacock curls a little bit on the short side as far as hurl goes. So I'm putting more in to make it a little bit more. Yeah, just wrap it over itself a yeah. little bit and then come forward. I'm going to build that thorax just a little bit heavier than the body material was. Tie it off. Clip it and then fold the wings, fold the wing case over. Tie it down. Now, you can see those those legs are going to come back to be about the right size. Perfect. Now, I think the pattern said you only need three legs on either side. I'll just grab some and fold it over. That I looks like about three. I haven't met a fish yet three. that could count myself. Well, hey, you got to do this. But the idea is you want to keep them fairly sparse. Yes. Then I'll fold some over on this side. Because that'll look more natural. Yeah. And then I can come in and trim off what I don't need. Or mm -hmm. like I've heard you say so many times, you could uh, leave them stick over the eye to become feelers. Well, on little nymphs like this, I don't usually do that. Oh, don't you? Uh, it depends on the pattern. It certainly there, wouldn't hurt anything. No, sure wouldn't. That's a good looking They're all folded nymph. over. And like hey. this one, I did not wait. I mean, it yeah. could easily be done. Depends on how deeply you want to fish it and what line combination you're Absolutely. using and all. But it's a, it's a fine looking nymph. But and turning I'm a, that toward the camera, you can see now yeah. the little legs. Oh, yeah. How they stick well, out. Well, I'm a real fan of peacock. Oh. I think if there's one universal fly tying material, material oh. that would be peacock. Because it's so iridescent. Iridescent, got a little Changes natural color. sparkle. It just, yeah, it's a good, good. Well, look at material. a housefly. Housefly is not the same color at all. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit like the peacock. You yeah. turn it in the light, and there it is. Yeah. Well, well, there's a peacock and pheasant nymph. As a peacock, or I mean a pheasant tail, tail, as the peacock for the body, ribbed with copper wire, as a pheasant tail for the legs and the back, as peacock curl for the thorax. You know, sometime on that show, when we have a little time, we need to discuss sinking line configurations of mm -hmm. when you use what and mm -hmm. why, and good lines to use and leader combinations. There's a lot to talk about. Lakes so you keep stream. tuning in every week and we'll keep trying to bring some good stuff for you. See you next time. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.